When you win your first three, everyone automatically assumes you're just gonna rattle them off. But look at how my second half of my career unfolded. I just want to be the first to tie the best of all time, the six gold medal record by John Smith. The Olympic year and the letdown of trials, you know, the rivalry with Dake, nine months of pregnancy, a baby boy. And it was just the culmination of so much. Oh, oh. I thought I was done, but I thought, just do the work right now. And eventually, like, it worked out for me. Everybody. We were a month into the pandemic and you guys at Flow were picking the team of the decade and I wasn't on that list at all. And so I remember I reached out to Pyle, I was like, hey, I want, I want to like defend my honor. What's up, bro? I'm happy to be here. You know why I'm here. I'm here for Ben <laughs> and for Kyle. The night before, uh, me and him were talking about it and I always hype him up. I'm like, no, like you were the best. <laughs> so it was probably half my fault because I'm like, you were totally the best. And I kid you not, I was like, you know, that if you're going F on FRL, they're totally going to tell Dake that he should be on FRL too because he's the only, I mean, who's going to argue his side? Oh, I brought on a surprise guest, guys. I thought it wasn't <laughs> oh, no. fair if oh, we had Let's go. When he came on, I, I didn't think it was going to get hostile. But clearly when you have two individuals that have very strong personalities and believe very strongly in their abilities, then you're probably going to have some friction. We're talking about the future. Let's talk about right now. What do you mean, right? Let's go, bro. No, I mean, you're no, getting, that's you not. You keep hurting yourself. You're going to keep getting worse and worse. You're going to use that excuse stop, all the way down. Stop, stop, You know, I, I felt very uncomfortable. It's like, if LeBron is doing a, a show, you never bring Kevin Durant, like, into the show while he's doing it without warning him before. So, like, I was totally unprepared. Because if you try to ride me for even a half a second, I'm going to reverse you. And stop. then you're automatically stop, stop, stop it. Now you're being disrespectful. I'll step over that leg instantly and reverse it. So he was prepped. He had thought about it all night. I had completely been unprepared for whatever was going to occur that day. You understand how human physiology works doesn't mean that it's wrong. Okay, here's okay, whatever. Right, human right, physiology. Right. I'm not a scientist. There had always been like this underlying bubbling tension that I knew existed, but like most of it was on his behalf just because of like pure competitiveness and like jealousy because I'm like, I've always won, so I really have no ill will toward you. I'm gonna win these next two, no problem. Okay, you're we'll you're see. getting old, you keep stretching out the practice, it's making it worse and worse. It's hurting you, man. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Not quite as fast as it used to be. You know, pretty much everything he was describing in that moment was just like, okay. This is why we wrestle. Yeah, that's going to be a oh takedown for Burroughs. Grab the two. Be That'll four. be it. Looking this will be four. over. Burroughs knows that it's over. Burroughs in three. And this is why we have opportunities to compete. You are in for Bro, a rubber hurt. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Kyle Dake, Jordan Burroughs, two of the best to ever do it. We will find out in probably April of 2021 where these two stand in freestyle April wrestling. April 2021. Stay tuned. We'll see hey, you then. get there, buddy. I hope you get there. Yeah, at the Olympic Trials 2021, I never really felt dialed in from a physical and like mental space. But I was, I'm a competitor, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna rock no matter what. It just felt different. Like, I feel like he hasn't wrestled with like animosity in the past, but there was so much leading up to those matches. He knew it was gonna be Dake that came through. That's who I spent the entire year prepping for, um, trying to replicate, there was no, one else that I expected to come through that bracket, but hey. Oh boy. Here we go. <laughs> I honestly don't I don't remember the full scope of it, but I wasn't really shooting. Not a lot of offense at all in this first one. It's actually been day controlling center. When I don't go to that place where I'm shooting constantly. I have to now play the chess game, which he is an expert at. Three what points. defense from Kyle Dake. Holy cow. Now under two minutes. 3-0 Kyle Dake. I think after the first match, he felt so confident and comfortable that he was like, Psh, this is a done deal. Smart by Dake on the edge. Here it is. Burroughs needs a takedown. He's one of those guys, you can't let him get a lead because his defense is so 
impeccable that you don't want him to sit in a position where you have to come get him. Oh, wow. Kyle, Kyle Dake, Dake wow. in two straight matches. It was, it was tough, man. It was tough. I didn't feel like he was the better wrestler that day. I felt like he just gamed me. Like I felt like he just outclassed me. For the first time in over wow. a decade, Jordan Burroughs will not be representing Team USA at the World or Olympic Championships. When I left the arena that day, like it was a very lonely experience for me. You could hear the crowd and you could see all the people and all the excitement on the big screen. And, but then also meeting up with my family and you got to snap right back into being a husband and a dad. You know, I got three kids that are counting on me. I got a pregnant wife. I was just like freshly pregnant and sick. Um, so it was a crazy weekend. Honestly, after, after the embarrassment and the humiliation shakes, you realize that I need like a change or overhaul. I just needed time. I just felt mentally fatigued and drained and, and I just needed something new. So it was a little tough, but when I made the decision to go to 79, I had done that while I was still in Lincoln. And I told those guys like, hey, like I wanna go 79. I wanna get right back to it. I'm not gonna take any time off and I'm gonna go and try to make the world team. Okay, here we go, guys. 79 kilograms, round of 16, Jordan Burroughs, Hayden Hydley, Burroughs in the red. But the great thing, going into trials, I'd never wrestled in the rules like Nolf, um, Hydley, or Marcella. I never competed against any of those guys. So I, I knew at that point that anyone who's never wrestled me is gonna have a hard time wrestling. They're all much younger than me. They've all grown up respecting me and admiring my career. So I think I'll be just fine. All right, underway, 79 kilogram match, Jordan Burroughs. And Deringer is gonna make this up. Hard hand fight. First match with the ringer, I got thrown to my back. That might have been the first time I've ever like been had to fight off my back in 10 years. Then all of a sudden I look back, it's 4 4. I'm like, what did I do? Um, but it was it was good. I felt explosive, so that gave me like a lot of confidence where I'm like building. I walked off after scoring 10 on a guy like Ringer who's hard to score, and I was feeling I was feeling confident. I'm like, this guy can't get me. What Travell said to me really challenged me in between matches. He's like, listen, do you want to prove that you're the best wrestler or do you just want to win? And so the second match, my goal was to really stay poised and not to concede anything. I felt good about that until that last minute of the match. And oh. Uh oh. Grabbing his calf, calf there. I don't know if he's cramping up. And I just hyperextended my calf and like initially I felt a pop right away. But when I stood up, I stumbled. I'm like, I have no power here. Like I can hardly stand. But I'm like, all I need to do is stance in motion for 50 seconds. Stance in motion for 50 seconds and keep this guy from taking me down. I was back here with the kids. It was kind of hard to understand what happened. But we knew like he was really hurt. After after trials, I thought it was done. I thought it was over. Um, I'm not sure yet. I don't want to speculate because I really don't know. And, and then when he had called me, he said, like, it's, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to wrestle. He was super upset that night. I don't really have time to, to be happy right now. It's kind of, I don't feel good. He was like, I just wrestled so great, and I don't even know if I'm going to be able to wrestle at Worlds. Because you're just kind of laying up in the hotel room thinking, like, man, is this possible? Am I wasting my time by continuing to train? But he had called me and, you know, said, if I'm gonna try, then I probably need to stay here. And I was 37 weeks then, and I was all in with it. I was like, yes, like, I'm fine. We were so invested on winning this world title that I was like crazy person. Like, my friends are like, you're about to have a baby. Why are you, why is this okay? And I'm like, I don't care. And we just started rehabbing right away. We just want to hit it hard. But I thought maybe if I, just tried that my body would heal like supernaturally. I'm like, just do the work right now. And eventually, like it worked out for me. On like the eighth day, I go in to see my, um, my midwives. She's like, you're six centimeters dilated. She's like, it's probably gonna happen tonight. And I'm like, no, my husband is out of town. Like, do I need to like tell him to come home? And she's like, yes. 
you need to call him when you leave here or right now and just tell him to come home. I call him and he's just like, <laughs> he's so pissed. He's like, what do you mean you're about to have a baby? I'm like, listen, every other day of the year you can be off wrestling, chasing your dreams, but like that day when I have the baby, I'm not messing around. You need to be in that room. So I'm like, crap. So I'm like packing up all my bags, I'm like throwing everything together. I booked the next flight. And so I finally get here to Philly. I get here to Philly, nothing. S still six meters, centimeters dilated, nothing's happening. Baby's not moving. So I'm like, what the heck? There was a little bit of tension between Lauren and I because she's like, I wanted you home because I thought the baby was coming. I don't know when the baby's coming. Like I was just going off the recommendation of the midwife. And I'm like, yeah, but I got the world championship. It's in two weeks. There was a serious clash between us because when someone is at the brink of like realizing their dream that they've been chasing for a really long time, because at this point, we're not even just talking about a world title. It's like six world titles, irrational. And I'm 38 weeks pregnant, six centimeters. I'm irrational. So we're just like two irrational people trying to like come to a compromise. You know, for me, I just decided like, this is the right thing. I am responsible for my family. My wife needs me. And it really gave me the ability to rehab, train, and to be a man of my family all simultaneously. At that point, I was thinking, you know, I'm probably either gonna have this baby when he's in Norway, or maybe it'll be late and maybe he'll make it home. I mean, the team had already met up in Hoboken and they were all gonna fly together um, over to Oslo. And I was like, I wanna stay a couple extra days to wait for the baby, but really I was just staying a couple extra days to rehab, but I didn't wanna tell anyone I was hurt. And then the freaking baby came. It was crazy. The baby came super quick. I think I got to the hospital at 7.30 and Banner was born at 8.30 and you know, we had no idea he was a boy, but that's like Ben Jordan's absolute dream. I was so hyped, I was so pumped, because I, I, since Beacon was born, I've been waiting for another boy so we could have brothers. I've always wanted brothers. Um, and so now we've, it's perfect, our family's perfect. We've got two sisters, we've got two brothers. Um, yeah, it's perfect. I was extremely happy that he was there, you know, two days before he had to leave for Worlds. It was wild. I got to see the baby and I left while Lauren was still in the hospital. Like when I left to get on the plane to go to Norway, like Lauren was still in the hospital. I didn't even get to take her home. I was like, I do not even care. He was here for the birth. I'm like, I will go home by myself and he'll meet us there in a week. And it was, um, it was pretty crazy, but it was also really special. When I got to the World Championships, I was feeling good. So I went out there and I was like, bang, bang, bang. And my legs felt fresh. Like I didn't feel any burn or fatigue in my warm up. So I'm like, it's gonna be a good day. And I had, I had Russia again right away. Right? I always have Russia um, on my side of the bracket. So yeah, I knew I could beat him, but I knew it was gonna be hard. So it was a brawl, it was a battle. I remember bleeding. And from the top of my head, bleeding from the eye, had stitches immediately after the match. Um, but it's nice when Tadiev's in the corner and you can kind of stick it to Russia a little bit. That's one thing that always gives me a lot of, a lot of satisfaction is beating Russia. The team I want to beat more. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, baby. And then moving on to the semifinals. I say this respectfully, but once I saw Japan, I'm like, I'm gonna really speed up. The job's not done yet, so I can't really get too excited because, you know, the only thing worse than bronze is silver. Uh, and, you know, my legacy and my career has been defined by the gold medals that I win, um, not the other ones. Uh, so I, I want the gold. When I got to the finals, I was wrestling a kid from Iran, and I was like, man, how old is this guy? And they were like, oh, he was junior world champ this summer. So I'm like, this guy's gotta be young, 1920. So I was thinking about this. I won my first world championship in 2011. This guy's 19 years old. So when I won my first, he was nine years old. And so he's grown up his entire life in wrestling in Iran, who I'm a hero there. So he's watched me, the entirety of his wrestling career, he's watched me, he's watched all of his countrymen cheer for me. Much more aggressive. Burroughs comes in, this time he finishes. Now they're probably like, all right, now you go beat him. Does the Iranian have one more shot? He does not. History for the United States. Jordan Burroughs has number six. Man, winning number six was, it was relieving, honestly. Like it was exciting, but it was relieving because the six 
gold medal record by John Smith. That's what kept me in the sport for so long. I wanted to tie or beat John. I set out to do this 10 years ago. It took me 10 years to do this. Where you can be like, did it. Now everything else is up from here. I wish I was there for the sixth title, but it was pretty cool to be home with a new baby, with all the kids around us. And then to watch him win it was so special. It was, it was just the culmination of so much. I think the Olympic year and the letdown of trials and you know the rivalry with Dake, and then you compound, you know, nine months of pregnancy, a baby boy, and it just all working out the way like you actually imagine and dream it to was so incredible. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two. Everything that I do from now on moving forward, I feel like I'm at a casino playing with house money. I've done it. I've done a lot. And I still feel like I have more to do. I'm in position to make multiple world teams moving forward. I feel like there are still more medals for me to get, at least two more. Um, and then we'll kind of see when the Olympics roll around what that looks like, how I feel, how my body's holding up, how Kyle's wrestling, where he's at, how he wrestled in 23. Um, but I think at this point, I'm really trying to enjoy the last couple of years of my career before I step away. Like, I want to honestly be able to say that like, I, I, I had fun.